Sash and I'm here outside the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos. It's 2017 and I'm here with one of our partners, Malcolm Frank from Cognizant. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for having us. Now you're co-author of a new book yes. about AI. What is going to happen when a robot takes my job? Uh, I don't think a robot will ever take your job. Thank goodness. <laughs> but people are very concerned about it. It's very much in the zeitgeist. We think 2017 is the year that artificial intelligence goes mainstream. and people are concerned because you look at games of intellect. When the machine can win at chess, when it can beat any human at Go, um, that is a real concern to folks. When we look in the paralegal business that artificial intelligence platforms can easily out-execute a crack team of paralegals at a white shoe law firm. In radiology, uh, I think in 10 years it'll be malpractice if you go to a human radiologist because we see the machine, like with mammography, has more than a 99% accuracy, whereas you know one out of five humans will actually make a mistake in that process. So when people think that through, they start to think, is the machine gonna start to eat white collar work? And what does that mean to me? It's a big, big issue. So tell me a little bit more about what we're gonna see. You've mentioned some really interesting examples. In health, we've seen, your, I know that in the book you talk about what's happening in transportation, in right. government as well. What are the implications for what people need to think about specifically? It's, we think this is quite significant. Last year at Davos, the conversation was the fourth industrial revolution. We think this is the machine that actually catalyzes that revolution. Ultimately, we think it's gonna be positive. We think it's gonna be a catalyst of economic growth, but getting to the other side is gonna be challenging for lots of firms. When it comes to jobs, we believe that there is going, it'll touch every job. Mm -hmm. um, now there are reports out there and surveys and studies. We saw Oxford University really got uh, a lot of headlines when they came out and said 47% of all jobs may actually be eviscerated by the new machine. Mm -hmm. We think that's hyperbole. It doesn't pass the smell test. Right. Um, if you actually look in the G7, there's 370 million jobs. So that would mean 173 million by 2025 would actually go away due to artificial intelligence. That's not going to happen. Uh, in our analysis, we think that 13% of jobs actually, or 12% of jobs will go away due to the bot, but then 75% will actually be enhanced. Mm -hmm. The robot is going to be your friend. It's gonna be your colleague. It's gonna make your job more efficient, more enriching, and you'll be a better professional as a result of it. And what people also don't recognize in today's context is that 13% new jobs will be created as a result of the bot. So in the next decade, this is going to transform most every industry. It's gonna transform the very nature of work, and people need to understand what that's all about right now. So just take me through an example of what you're talking about. For example, in healthcare, how is the uh, bot going to change my experience going into a hospital looking to have an operation? Well, you look at it now, that whole process before, during, after, there's certain portions of it that will never change when you're on the table. Right. That has to be done by humans. Mm -hmm. But when you come into the hospital, it's remarkable how little these doctors know about you. Mm -hmm. And it's a tragedy. In the United States, there are 400,000 patient deaths per year due to misdiagnoses alone. Mm -hmm. So when ED's coming into the ER, if they really understand in a very pixelated way, who is this patient, what is she all about, what are these conditions, mm -hmm. that is a game changer to begin with. We also see, for example, um, in post-op, uh, in terms of recovery, when that gets digitized and when AI gets applied to it, when a nurse comes to you, she can look at what is the next best action, when this patient is experiencing these issues, what should I do next? And the AI platform will not only just provide that in a generic context, but in a very specific one for you. So we think that in terms of health outcomes in that scenario, uh, AI will really be transformative. And what's your recommendation for people thinking about their jobs, thinking about their skills, and what they need to be preparing now for the bot revolution? They need to read our book. Um, <laughs> no, but it's, it's, they need to understand, first of all, it's just the nature of the machine. It's remarkable that we use these platforms and we don't understand the magic that occurs behind them. So when you're on a train and you download a video and it's the perfect one for you that you want to watch at that moment, how did that actually occur? So mm. understanding artificial intelligence, the technology stack behind it. Um, we think that that's very, very important. The second piece is we outline that there's not one play 
for artificial intelligence, there's actually five. Mm -hmm. And so there, you have to pick your play, meaning do you want to actually automate work? Do you want to enhance workers? Do you want to create something entirely new and new value propositions in your company? And so you have to pick one of those plays and then get going. Malcolm, thank you so much for stopping by the Hub Culture Pavilion. Thank Here you. in Davos, and I'm Edie Lush. Thank you.